Okay, boys, welcome to a incredibly scuffed video. I'm going to let the gate drop, and I'm going to let everyone disappear before I start talking properly. And you'll see why in a second. So, uh, just going to wait for the gate to drop here. Everyone's going to disappear so I can actually hear myself think. So, um, I mean, it's been a while, so... Uh, and you might understand that I sound probably a lot worse than I usually do right now. Now, <laughs> we've had a little bit of drama, and... So, I mean, I've not uploaded a video in about a week at this point, and that isn't, like, I've, nothing's happened or anything. I've just uh, not felt too inspired on the whole video side of things, so I just haven't uploaded at all. However, I have turned my PC on today to record a video, hopped into this online Hiving Curl lobby. This is my first time playing the track, by the way. I've not actually run a lap at all yet, uh, so we'll see how this goes. I thought I'd hop on a 125, test myself a little bit, and just as I went to press play, I've realised that my microphone isn't working. Uh, I look at the back of it, and I have come to realise that I have absolutely destroyed it. So I have my so how my PC and stuff set up is I'm right next to my window, and it's been super super hot in the UK the last few few days or week or so. Uh, so I've been having my windows open late at night, and before I go to bed, I, I close them because I don't want to invite any uh, any creepy crawlies and stuff into my room to not pay rent. So. As I was closing the window, I knocked my mic over, didn't think anything of it. I've just realised that the USB that goes into the back of it is absolutely destroyed. I've tried straightening it myself with a pair of pliers, absolutely no luck, it's not working. And it's quite an expensive microphone, it's a sure something something 7. So I'm either going to have to see if I can get a single replacement part, or if that's not the case, then I'm just going to have to buy an entirely new microphone, which... I won't lie, I'm a little bit pissed off by it. Um, so, yeah, that is why I probably sound absolutely god-awful right now. I do apologise. Uh, I just want to say, this track, absolutely sick, by the way. Uh, it's made by Bishop. He's done a few tracks, mostly the Australian ones I've covered. Um, but so far, so good. It feels like it flows pretty well. It's a very fast track. And you might also notice that I have no Max HUD on at the moment either. Now, reason for that being is... What day is it today? It's Saturday. So on Thursday night, I done the aerial uh, Red Bud race. And I thought, you know what? Let me try mixing things up a little bit and turn Max HUD off completely. Uh, one, to save my frames, because I'm, I've been having a few frame issues on the aerial tracks, and it did actually work. I had very, very good FPS. But then also, just to try and not distract myself so much, I find myself very, very often uh, like looking down at the bottom left to try and see what the time gap is, uh, looking up at the top left where, where I have my uh, time in, in regards to lap times to see what sort of laps I'm doing. Uh, I've just absolutely eaten dookie, oh my god, that was awful. And I thought I'd turn it off and see how it goes. And now, whilst I feel like it did help and I didn't get as distracted and I was focusing on the race, I had probably one of the worst two motos of my uh, quote-unquote bikes career. It did not go well. Uh, EU wasn't too bad, I went 3 and 2 for second overall, um, but then NA, oh my god, uh, I f went 5 and I think 7 was my final results there, which I was not very proud with, I was very very pissed off at like riding around at 5am on the floor, you see it's got, s oh, it's oh, that's not how the track goes, this is why <laughs> I usually have the map so I can see where I'm going on the bloody track, but, okay, just ride through me, interesting. I'm guessing that's a, uh, an Aussie man or a Brazilian man there, based on the pink, with the uh, the orange writing by his name. But, uh, there's that. <laughs> I don't think he got affected by that whatsoever. But, anyway, moving on. I wasn't expecting much out of this race anyway, but I feel like it's kind of been spread at the moment. I wanted to get on, run a couple laps, and then do a race, but it looks like we uh, we hopped straight into one. And I don't think people realise it's me at the moment either anyway, purely on the basis of I'm running a different name. It's uh, it's an inside joke, it's nothing weird, it's just um, it's my name spelled a little bit differently, so it, maybe some people will realise, maybe some people won't. It is what it is. Uh, I've been noticing that more and more people recently as well have been commenting under my videos saying they've seen me in this server or that server, and I mean, I hate to break it to you guys, it's not me, there's a few imposters going around, so just take everything you see uh, lens wise with a pinch of salt, it, the chances are it's just someone pretending to be me. Um, the, the good way of testing actually is if you load up the chat you'll see that everybody's kind of got an MMR so you've got the first number is ping and the second number is your kind of online rating. Uh, mine is currently 1780 and that won't change because I think the bikes or the MMR is actually broken at the moment where we got the new tyres and the new OEMs update. Uh, I think it just breaks it for a while. I think they have to be registered in some certain type of way and that's not happened yet. So if you do want to check if it's me, don't go do that. Obviously another way of finding out is 
are they actually any good? I've <laughs> seen some people join in forest lobbies, and obviously everyone knows that forest is kind of my, my track. I've spent far more many hours than I'd like to admit riding around there, and they can't even do under like a 110. So that's another good sign to tell if it's me or not. Uh, this track, very, very good. I have no idea, like I said, what position I'm in. I think I'm in about third or so at the moment. I can't see anybody else. I mean, everyone's there's someone there to the left. But that CSL guy who uh, cleaned my clock earlier, I think he's in second. So they're over there somewhere. And the only other downside I've found about Niven Max Hard is I have no clue how long's left in the race. Uh, I know this is a 10 minute plus a lap or 10 minute plus two long race, so just going to be sitting here chatting for a while. Um, but that is it for the most part. Now, I unfortunately. Well, I say unfortunately, let me let me give you some backstory first. Currently, uh, for Ariel in both EU and NA, I am in the lead in the points. So I've got both red plates, barely in NA, I might add. I'm only two points ahead after my god awful red bud round. Chicken uh, chicken definitely gained a lot of points with me there. He was absolutely flying. Um, but EU, I've been doing really well, like uh, putting away each round consistently. However, I am going to be missing next round. Um, it is for something very, very important, which I'm not really going to get into too much. Um, but that is going to mean I'm going to lose both red plates. I was probably going to lose it in NA anyway, because Chicken's found another gear these last few rounds. Um, but EU, I felt really, really confident. So all that means is I'm going to have to kind of try my arse off for the remaining rounds. I don't think we've even got that many left. It's only a 12-round series. Um, we've done s we've done five, sorry. So we've got another, another seven to go. But obviously I'm going to miss one, so it'll be six. I'm probably... So Jack's in P2 right now. Um, if Jack goes... 1-1, one, one, I want to say, at the next round that I'm going to miss. I'm going to be about... Oh god, I don't even know how many points it's going to be. I'm probably going to be about 30, 35-ish points behind, I think. I don't think he's many points behind me whatsoever. But that is going to be interesting. Um, I, I don't expect much. I don't expect to win it at all. Uh, I think, thankfully, there's I think there's prize money for top three in points overall, and we've got a pretty, pretty good gap over third place moment, who I think it's rum, but... I think he might have just lost it, because I know he left Moto 2 of, uh, of Redbud. It seems like it was a very very hit and miss track for a lot of people. So some people seem to really, really enjoy it. Uh, some people really, really hated it. I was kind of on the fence. I enjoy the track if I'm just riding around in testing. I really did not enjoy the track for racing whatsoever. I think I had maybe 10 minutes or so into one of the EU Motos where I had a good battle. And outside of that, I just wasn't really enjoying things at all. It's just, I, I won't get into it too much. Um, it seems like the, the negativity doesn't get taken too well. They like hearing what they want to hear a little bit more after I, I left some negative comments and got told, do I say I have anything positive to say? But I'm just trying to kind of see where the uh, thought process is a little, a little bit of time and see what we can do to improve. Uh, the only thing, well, the first thing that I mentioned is in regards to some of the roughness, uh, I feel like some... I, I compare it to IRL because I think at the end of the day the tracks are meant to be replica tracks, you know. And there was one part for me, or this the outside does not look like a good move. Uh, there's one part on the track, so the very, very final right hander before the finish line. Uh, if you go and look at the very end of Moto 2, IRL, when the track should be at its very, very worst, that track was basically flat and hard pack, though there was, wasn't really any bumps in it whatsoever, there was no ruts at all. Um, but in game, we had these massive kind of wavy rollers around the outside, so if it was a sand track, and there was just a few, few bits like that where I didn't understand it. Um, and that, that was just the annoying bit for me. Is And I feel like there's some bits of the track that have been made more difficult than they were IRL, which then means other part of the track have to be compensated for it. So the leap is a very, very difficult jump. I fully understand that. In real life, I feel like there wasn't very much in the way of rough at all around the outside of the corner before it or leading up to it. Um, so in game, it was super, super, super rough around the outside. But then what that meant is they had to build the right hand side lip of the leap like five feet taller than the left hand side to let people get the speed to clear it. Um, so in my mind, it's why didn't you just make the outside a little bit smoother in the corner like it was IRL and then the whole jump could be one level. You still wouldn't have been able to clear it from the inside because it was a huck and and I two, it was so funny watching the 250s racing. They was literally like, if you sat there at the side of it and watched it, everybody, they was either scrubbing it from the inside, which in my mind is probably a smart thing to do, or anyone that was hucking it, I don't think I saw anybody get over it clean. It was just absolutely framing the life out of it and hoping that you get a good bounce and not crash him. Um, but it was, uh, it was, it was good racing to watch take part in probably not so much but then also that opinion is probably pretty biased because i just had a really shit race 
Uh, I'd like to throw some, <laughs> I'll throw some excuses out there. Uh, the night before, I had two hours sleep. So staying up until 5 a.m. after running on two hours of sleep, just do some uh, MX bike races. Probably not the smartest idea I've ever had. Probably not something I'll do again. I'm not sure. Not sure how much motivation I'll have on the NA side of things now, to be honest. Now that I'm missing around, uh, and obviously I had such a bad race last time, and I really don't enjoy setting up that late. The reason I've been doing so is because I've been in the points lead and I kind of wanted to carry it going. So with that going out the window now, kind of wondering what's the point. Maybe I should just kind of focus on EU, and I need to play the game more. Uh, the last two weeks or so, I've not been playing the game whatsoever. The videos that you see is really the only time that I spend playing the game outside of Aerial. So maybe 30 minutes or so every every other day. And the last week, you'll see that I've not uploaded at all. I think I've got I've got 13 hours game game time played the last two weeks, and I'm pretty sure probably 10 plus hours of that would be purely from EU and NA Aerial. Because they do go on for a hell of a long time. Oh, come on. Hang the clutch. There we go. They stuck in fifth gear. Uh, this Fantic is not too bad, by the way. I was going to... So, let me, let me go in third person again. This kit here is what McChicken made for McCreations for Redbud. Like a Redbud, almost like just American themes and colours, which I really, really like. And it goes incredibly well with my Husky. And I thought, what, what 125 would it look good on? I thought I was going to go on the Yamaha at first, but I'm really not a fan of the stock Yamaha graphics on the OEM pack. I think it just looks a little bit, a little bit bland, kind of lacking in the shading department a bit. Uh, and then I went to the Fantic and I thought, you know what, Fantic's not something I've ridden very much. Uh, it's, it's quite a good bike, it has the same, um, it's exactly the same as the Yamaha in every way other than the aesthetics. I keep over jumping into this inside. Every single lap I've done that, I need to remember the track. <laughs> Instead of just sitting here talking. I don't, that's, that's the thing, it's like, there's no one behind me, absolutely nothing there, and the leaders have disappeared, so I feel like I'm in a bit of a, a bit of no man's land at the moment, but it's actually, it's a really good track by the way, uh, Bishop, I think you've done quite a good job. I, I've seen quite a few positive comments on the track, so I went to download it, and I downloaded it just before this video, because I was going to, I had a plan of kind of doing solo on Paris, I've seen a lot of people running around Paris doing world record laps and stuff, and that looks really fun, um, but then at the, in the same time, I didn't, I, I wanted to mix up a bit, I don't want to just keep doing single player all the, all the time, and someone did uh, leave a comment the other day that kind of made me rethink my content a little bit on what I'm actually doing here, which is I've just turned into like a, a track review channel, which I don't want to be. I want to kind of bring you guys a little bit more fun, and I realise that a lot of my videos lately have just been me and single player riding around on whatever track's been released that, that day or that week, and I can imagine how that probably does get quite boring. So I'm going to mix up a little bit, try and do a few more multiplayer things with you guys. Uh, keep an eye on my Discord, even though it's not really active anymore. It's not. I've not even got active links for it anymore for people to join, because my idea was to scrap it and build an entirely new one, but that's that's not happened. I've kept putting that off. If you're already a part of it, keep an eye out. I might put some messages out uh, out of the blue every now and then, asking people if they want to kind of just take part in a race. We might do some weird and wonderful things like buy a road multiplayer, maybe some more pit bikes. That pit bike race that I've done online not long ago was incredibly fun. I need to get back to more of that stuff, because I, I feel like... I've lost a little bit of love for bikes recently, uh, losing that motivation a bit and just not having that many in instances where I feel like, yeah, I really want to load up the game and play it. But that's that's natural, that's going to happen after you've played the game for over a thousand hours, but I definitely get spurts every now and then where that changes. Today being that exact case, you know, I, I woke up this morning and I was like, you know what, I really fancy playing some bikes, let's hop on and do something. And when I'm doing different things like this on a track that I've never played before and a bike that I rarely use, it just, uh, it brings back that little bit more a little bit more enjoyment for me. Uh, I will put, be putting Max HUD back on for future videos, so if this one's looked a little bit a bit lacklustre, you can't really see what position I'm in or what the timing's like and stuff, I do apologise. I'd completely forgotten and by the time that I'd pressed the record button, the, uh, the siren had played for everyone to get to the gate to uh, actually start the race. So a little bit rushed at the start of this video, but hopefully you've, uh, you've enjoyed it regardless. And again, for the microphone, I do apologise. The whole reason, this is just my normal kind of, it's just a Logitech headset. Uh, the whole reason I stopped using this in the first place is, you might notice it throughout this video, I'm not sure until I go back into the recording and kind of listen to it back, but for whatever reason, it, it will cut out the end of my sentences ever so slightly, or if I'm a little bit too quiet on one word to the other, it will miss out the start and end of the word, and there's nothing I can do about it. It's just, it's just cheap headset things going to look into this whole microphone situation but the next two or three videos you you might have to deal with the same headset i've got nothing uh, no microphone that i can use to replace it for the time being 
I'm incredibly annoyed by it. I'm going to see if there's any way I can fix it further. Or maybe I'll get out, reach out to my dad. He's a bit of a, a handyman when it comes to comes to the tools. Unlike myself, I'm I'm just an office office worker. I know nothing about tools and so on and so forth. But we'll see if we can get it fixed. Um, as this race comes to an end, as I'm about to cross the finish line here, hope you've enjoyed the video. Sorry for a little bit of an absence, but hopefully you've enjoyed this one regardless. What place did I end up in? I ended up in P3. Uh, which isn't too bad. There you go. There's my, my random name. 25 seconds behind. Jesus Christ. That is god awful. And 48. Seven. Se oh my god. People are on roids. Are they cutting the track or are they just that rapid? Let's have a look. Holy fuck. That was a good race. Jesus. I fucked up. Best lap. Yeah. Mad. Fair play to those guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Have a lovely rest of the day, whatever you're up to. And I promise I'll try and get into this microphone sorted sooner rather than later. Until I catch you guys in the next video. Peace. I'm working hard, I'm sacrificing my life, I'm sacrificing my mind, I'm sacrificing my sanity, but most importantly, I'm sacrificing my time, boy, I feel fine, I feel like I am a king, honestly, I can't complain, even with faith that's the size of a grain of some salt, I will still move a mountain and do what I want, I got salt to be for my own.